it moves, even if it cannot, if it cannot be seen back. What we're trying to do is to try to improve our ways of uh, packaging our substance, our message, so that it can be more effective and, ca and it can affect a transformation in the country. But transformation in any way cannot be affected unless there is transformation of the mind, which we call the uh, paradigm shift. <coughs> paradigm shift. When you're convinced of what you do or what you believe, that is when you change your way of life. When you believe that cholesterol is one of the causes of heart attack, syempre hindi ka nakakain ng mas masyadong ano, maraming cholesterol and so on. If you believe na ano ba yung uh, inilalagay sa paa na doon daw lumalabas lahat yung mga toxin, hindi uh, ba kayo doon? Ilalagay mo yung paa mo doon sa ano, pagkatapos, uh, makikita mong ano, dumi. Sabi ko, sana nagaling yan. Ma'am, galing po sa paa mo. Uh, <laughs> teka, teka muna, paano nang galing sa paa mo? Kasi nagbukas po yung mga pores, tapos lumabas yung mga dumi. Teka, teka. Ah, ilang beses, <laughs> ilang beses na eh, I put my feet, uh, foot feet in the the water, even if it's warm water, and, the, and then I started to analyze. Kasi nga binili ko yung machine, eh, kasi sabi ko kung ito ay totoo, maraming tao magagamot. Tapos inanalyze ko, paano lumalabas? Tapos sasabihin, you have to chase the wire once in two years. Ito sa way ng galaling yung dumi. Sinanap ko, inanap ko doon sa ano, inanap ko doon sa internet. May mga nakalagay doon na fake. So sabi ko, naisa na naman ako, 17,000 ito. Kaya ako, sabi ng sisari ko, ay, we will have business kasi, ayan, pagkikitaan natin. Alam mo nang ang peke, gagamitin mo pa sa ibang tao, lalo kang magpepeke. Tapos binigyan ako ng medicine kasi sabi ko masakit ang ulo ko. Binigyan ako sa ospital ng medicine, lalong sumakit ang ulo ko. Inanap ko sa ano bang pangalan nitong medicine, inanap ko sa internet. Kaya kung ako'y na-hospital, dala-dala ko yung aking computer. Kasi kung may binigay yung doktor, teka muna ito. Ay para sa epilepsy. My goodness, and that is 500 milligrams. Wala akong epilepsy, no? Lalo ako nagkasakit. Kaya... Kasi kung lunok ka ng lunok ng sinasabi ng kung sinong nagpapalunok sa'yo, ako, makaya pa ako sa buhay natin. So, anyway, we mentioned that Jesus was a Jew. And because Jesus was a Jew, he made use of Jewish methodology, of course. So here are some features of Jewish approaches to scripture, which we did not pay attention to before. In general, Jew, uh, traditional Jewish approaches to the study of scripture tend to be, this is the tendency, ahistorical. Ahistorical means to say the text is viewed as timeless. The meaning is not bound by the historical or cultural circumstances of its writing, but it is valid for now. So it is. it was valid before, it uh, is valid now, it will be valid forever. Timeless nga eh, timeless. So when, uh, time max. <laughs> so, when we speak about, for example, um, ano ba yun? corruption. Now we speak of a tax collector na corrupt. Itong si Sakeus. Si Sakeus, ano? Diba? Collector siya. That is, oo. Oh, oh. When it comes to money, there is always some kind of uh, corruption that is involved. And I will tell you why later, right? Another characteristic, it is open. The text is not constrained by any one interpretation. It is capable of many different interpretations, depending on which rabbi you are, you are talking to. And that is what I like there because the interpretation is open. You can choose, ito ang interpretation ni Lebowitz, ito ang interpretation ni Rabbi Hama, ito ang interpretation ni, mm, sino ba yung kanilang pinakaanong interpretation? So, uh, interpreter. So, uh, may pili ka. Uh, Nakaka-resonate ako dito. But they have reasons why they are interpreting it that way. So, it is not as if it is open, uh, open to anything and anything goes in depth. It is uh, uh, constricted to the peshat. 
When we say best shot, the text, the text itself. Wag kang lalayo sa text. Dapat yung text ang gagamitin mo na for interpretation. Another characteristic, it is associative. Any part of scripture can be used to throw light on any other part. There is little sense of the text having a history of development. So, for example, yung sinabi ni Father Barot, you are the salt of the earth. Anong gawin mo? Hanapin mo ang ibig sabihin ng salt. Anong ibig sabihin ng salt noon? Anong ibig sabihin ng salt sa Old Testament? Kasi sa covenant, ginagamit ang salt. Anong different interpretations ng salt? So that you can come up with your own interpretation of, I am now the salt. Ano ba yung salt? So you are not constricted to one interpretation. Uh, because it is associated with other uh, silliness or other metaphors in other parts of scripture. Right? And then, it is playful. There is joy, freedom, and creativity in the way the text is handled and in the way the text is ex expanded through commentary and story. So there are many stories, there are many layers of that particular story. And what do Jews do? They try to uncover what the word that we use there is to dig, to ano yung tawag do sa mga words? Anthropologists. Archaeologists. Thank you. Archaeologists. So archaeological ang ano ginagamit na methodology, meaning to say dig the text. Ano ba kung na text? Dig some more. What did it mean before? Dig some more as far as you can. So there are many diggings. And in those diggings can be found also the interpretations to that particular story. So, but you have to remain in the story. You have to remain in the plain text. And then it is also spiritual, of course. The text almost always has something to do with our relationship with God and to how we are to live our life. So, the message. It is saying something about you and me. It is saying something about our life. Kaya nga kung minsan may binabasa ka, pagkatapos sabi mo, aray. Katulad yan, binasa ko yung when I was in distress. Ano ba ito, Panginoon? Playing with the, with the verses. And nakarating ako sa 33 verse 3. Come to me and I will answer you and reveal to you what you do not know yet. At tamaan ako doon, aray. Ano to? Marami pang ako hindi alam. Eto nga, marami ako nadidiscover sa uh, apostolate, no? sa Bible apostolate, na hindi ko nadiscover nung ako ay tied up sa classroom. The classroom is a totally different environment when you go out to the parishes and talk to the people. And when people come to you to talk about the, what uh, Father mentioned yesterday, the griefs and anxieties, the problems of the time, the problems with, their, with themselves, with the... <coughs> with others and with their families especially. Ako at this point in time, my advocacy is the family. Kasi ang lahat ay nagsisimula sa pamilya. Especially because of my studies in psychology. My studies in psychology tell me that many hurts occur with our loved ones early on in life. And these hurts are carried over. And if it is not resolved, it is not uh, processed, then you will carry those hurts until your adulthood. I was researching on something and I, I came across those 89 years old, 90 years old, 70 years old Indians in America. And until now, they are still crying about the experiences that they experienced before. They were forced to speak in English rather than their mother tongue in the dormitories where they are sent to study. And if they cannot speak, they put uh, soap in their in their mouths, and then they were treated uh, they were treated like animals, inhuman. And uh, I uh, experienced that on, when I whenever I read things like that, my stomach also turns, and I cry with them because I am also a victim of some kind of uh, you know uh, bullying. And that is why I say, ah, ito pala yung sinasabi nilang, you know. Uh, kaloob. Kailangan may loob ka. Nakikiisa ka sa kalooban ng kapwa. Alright. So, 
we try to dig the text and try to find out what is the message of the text. What was the message of the text before in the audience that it was uh, it was um, addressing? Because of course, you got from uh, Bishop um, uh, Pabilio that Matthew had a Matthean audience. Therefore, what he wrote is fitting and proper to the Matthean audience. That's why when you write a research about Matthew, any part of Matthew, you have to study the whole Matthew. And you have to study the audience of Matthew, the characteristics of the audience from internal evidence. What do you mean by internal evidence? What is written in the in the in Matthew's gospel itself will tell you the kind of people he was addressing during that time. So what was the uh, message of that particular story to people of that time? Before you shift to your own time and say, and what is it telling to me now? So that is where the analysis come in. So the data, I'm just uh, you know connecting with Father's lecture yesterday. The data in this particular context is the text. The analysis, you no, know, is the analysis of the uh, story behind the text. Every text, there's a story behind the text. You know, before the text, behind the text. You know. And uh, you try to find out what it is addressing, who are they, who are being addressed, and why. And then, you go to your own situation, how about now? What is it telling to me now? And that is what we do in Bible sharing. But before in Bible sharing, we go straight to actualization. Ay, sinasabi, ito sinasabi sa akin, hindi muna. Tingnan mo muna kung anong sinasabi ng text na yan. Noon, at that time, approximate time when it was written. Before you apply it to your own. Meron at merong message na binibigay sa atin. In fact, kaya nga maraming uh, umaalis sa katoliko, pupunta sila doon sa mga Bible-centered people because even just one text, pag nakaangling ng kanilang damdamin, ah, magbabago na sila. Pagkatapos, susundan naman ng mga nag-lecture na, alam mo ba, ang Biblia talaga, ang tunay na nagsasalita sa atin, hindi yung mga sakramento na yan, hindi yung mga rosary na yan. Eh, ma maniniwala yung tao kasi maglalabas sila ng mga text out of context na uh, magpruweba sa kanilang sinasabi. Sa atin naman kasi, sinabi noon, uh, based on the authority of the church. But now, with the emergence of um, Nostra Aetate, where it says there, we also respect the methodology that is being used by the Jews, na chishif na tayo little by little. So, ito ang babala. This does not mean that interpretation is totally free and without limits. Interpretation is controlled by the plain meaning. The plain meaning is the text itself of the text and by the opinion of the sages. Kung Old Testament po ang pinag-usapan natin, mga hudyo ang sumulat niyan, so yung interpretation nila can be valid as well. Because they don't have only the written text, they also have the oral text na hanggang ngayon ay uh, pinangangalagaan nila. And so we listen also to the sages or we call them the rabbis. Okay, so that is the uh, reference by one si Kevin Mag who also studied in uh, Batkol. So those are interested, you can inform me and use my name so you can go to study in Batkol while it is still there because it will not be there forever. And then Jewish study methods. Jewish study method is, um, well, basically we call it the archaeological method. Archaeological because you start digging, finding out layer after layer. What are the layers that are involved in this particular text? So, basically we ask questions. Asking the right question is as important as selecting the right tool. Pick, axe, or brush in an archaeological dig. Nakita ko yung mga archaeologists doon. 
they are very careful in digging because uh, they might come across uh, some piece of uh, thing which might be destroyed. So ang liit liit ganyan sila. Sabi ko, mahatim ko kayang ganyan habang buhay kang ganyan. Ano tapos? Then, kahit na yung pinakamaliit iniista, di ba? Meron ba itong kinalaman ng panahon ni Jesus o ng panahon ng mga prophets? Diyos ko. We are recipients of the voluminous work of several people. That is why all the more we should appreciate our Bible. So, our questions need to be open-ended, hindi yung yes or no. One of the best tools is the question, what else could it mean? So, ito ang meaning nito. No? What else could it mean? Example, yung Martha and Mary. Martha and Mary, Father Peter, how do you... How do you explain the story of Martha and Mary? Luke 10, 38 to 42. Martha and Mary, sisters, binisita ni Jesus, nag-complain si Martha, bakit naman pinabayaan mo yung kapatid ko na ako lang ang nagtatrabaho, si Jesus pang pinagalitan. Tapos sabi ni Jesus, nako Martha, Martha, sabi mo kasi pinagkakabalahan. Mary has chosen the better part. So anong interpretation mo dun, Father? Or yung, ano, yung pinag-aralan ninyo? sa seminaryo o kaya narinig ninyo or binasa ninyo sa mga komentari ano pang interpretation dear father Meron bang sinabi doon na preparing for the Lord? Wala. Pero that is your ano, diba? presumption na naghahanda siya ng pagkain. Ganun din ba ikaw, Father? Anong interpretation mo doon sa marami kang pinagkakaabalahan, Martha? But Mary has chosen the better part. Hindi naman niya pinagalitan si Martha kasi ni-repeat niya eh. And repetition does not necessarily mean eh, you are being scolded. Martha, Martha is an address of gentleness. So, anong interpretation mo doon sa marami ka kasing pinagkakaabalahan pero si Mary has chosen the better part. <coughs> ano kaya yung marami pinagkakaabalahan? Uh, silang dala. Uh, mayroon, mayroon na, na nabasa ko na interpretation na, na silang dalawa ay na ay nakapili ng very good sila. We, we strike the balance. Okay. Ang ka Marta is hospitable. Kailangan dahil, kailangan dahil itang, kung wala pa si Marta, hindi makakain sila. Hindi makakaon sila si Jesus. So, maano nila? So, ka, kumain. We, we strike the balance. Uh, uh, na ay makinig, makinig tayo sa sa mga pulong ng Diyos at magpabaho kita for our and then for our stomach. So, ni, sa akin, hindi nga completely nga walang, walang anuman ang ginagawa ni Marta. Pero, sa akin, makinig siya. Pagka, pagkatapos makinig, magsaing siya. So, <laughs> so pagkatapos magsaing. Pero, kami, listen, si listen first. Pero, start, uh, according to the one, strike the balance. Silang dalawa ay uh, ating uh, we we follow we follow the the two but it's balance lang balance okay. thank you fathers uh, yan yung mga interpretation na nabasa natin narinig natin etc na naganda daw si ano si Marta dahil nga magpapakain kay Jesus at yung interpretation mo na ito yung mga sa uh, ano sa silent life ano yung mga harmonize no ang silent ano contemplative life and then active life or yun yun another interpretation can be like this bawal sa isang babae ang uupo sa paanan ng isang rabay so pwede nung pumunta si Jesus do sa bahay nila maraming kapit kapit bahay ang nakatingin tapos Pwede, na nakita nila si, ano, si Mary na nakaupo doon sa paaral ni Jesus. Siyempre, ano mangyari? So, si Marta, abala, abala. 
ako? Ano yung pinag-usapan dito sa ato? Pwede ganun ang kanyang pinagkakaabalaan. Kaya nawawala yung kanyang attention, yung kanyang focus kay Jesus kasi ganun ang kanya. Uh, oh, ganun ang, uh, pwede ganyan ang interpretation. At yan ay narinig ko kay Bishop Ambo. Bishop Ambo now is trying to be very creative with, the, with everything. Playing with the text. Sabi ko, ah, eto na yung nabuksan ng aming horizon dahil sa Nostra Aetate. Now we can interpret, uh, you know, in many different ways, especially ako narrative, no? Especially because in the olden times, when you speak about biblical scholarship, historical critical criticism, ang ano, talagang iginigit niya, kailangan marunong ka ng historical critical criticism. Ito yung ginamit namin sa Jerusalem, Havruta. Havruta comes from the word Haver. And Haver means friend. So, Haverim, friends na mga lalaki. That is the common term. Uh, friends. Haverim. Pero, ginagamit ko din yung Haverot. Kasi Haverot refers to friends. A uh, female. So, Shalom Haverim. Shalom Haverot. Uh, hindi lang Haverim, Haverim. Yeah. So, archaeology is best done in the company of others. So, it's excavation of the word. One of the most powerful tools at our disposal is the company of a friend, Haver. Kaya kami pinapauwi dito, kailangan meron kang partner sa discussion, especially every week. Discussion in the, uh, whatever is the table talk for that, for that week. Working in Havruta, that is with a partner, is the essence of the Jewish approach to Bible study. Kaya yun may binanggit ko yung ano, uh, mga rabbis na nag-aaral under the tree. Ang kanilang pinag-aaralan is by group. No one can say na siya lang ang pinag uh, pinanggagaling ano. Hindi ka kaya nga si ano si Pope, malala niyo si Pope, sabi ni Pope sa atin eh, uh, get out of your tables. Ano ba yung table study na ganyan? Hindi ka doon mag-aaral. Lumabas ka, go to the peripheries. You will learn also from the people. And uh, sit down with some other friend to be able to try to see together. Ano ba yung sinasabi ni Bible. Hebrew language, it is very useful for uh, the Old Testament because the Old Testament, as you all know already, has been written in Hebrew. But even if you don't know Hebrew, ang na-discovery ko, there are Bibles with four uh, different translations. No? Can you open your Bibles pala to? Why did I ask you to read that and then not open it? Uh, 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 Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. Sino ang may sariling Bible? Ah, ano yung version mo, sister? Good News Catholic Edition. Kaya po, ano yung version? Pakipasa ka yun. Then Adam had intercourse with his wife, and she became pregnant. She bore a son and said, By the Lord's help, I have gotten a son. So she named him Kai. Ikaw, Father, ano? The man had intercourse with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain, saying, I have produced a male child with the help of the Lord. What's the revised standard version? Iba sa yung? Okay, uh, ano po yung sa yung? Now the man knew his wife Eva, and she conceived and bore Cain. Saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. All right, so these are two different interpretations. The one is a formal interpretation, and the other one is a meaning based interpretation. So, yung kaya no, kay Father, sabi niya, the man knew his wife. Nakilala lang niya, tapos nagbuntis. Kaya pala. Kaya pala ngayon, hindi nakilala mo na ngayon. Bukas buntis ka na. So, if you translate from the translation, ay, magkakaroon ng problema, no? Uh, yung sa kanya kasi, directly, directly translated from Hebrew. And in Hebrew, to know is to have intimate physical relationship with a person. Kaya nung nag kami sa seminaryo, yun, ganyan, mga translation na ganyan. So sabi ng mga seminaryo sa akin, 
Nati, do I know you? No, I don't know you. Sabi ko <laughs> ganyan. I don't know you. Sabi ko nga ganda ganyan. Kasi they're, they're speaking within a particular context ng pinag-aralan namin. I don't know you. Okay, so, so, yung ano, yung sa inyo, diretso masyado. The man had intercourse with his wife. Another interpretation of this, the man lay with his wife. Ganyan, mas ano pa, no? Pero kung yung, yung sariling wika nyo ang gamitin nyo at yung word na yun ang gamitin nyo, ay di ba katawa-tawa? You think of your of your own language. And then you... you Nagtali. Yung, yung oh, mga ganyan. Para nagtali. But anyway, knowledge of the of the of Hebrew will help a lot. But you can also try to find out what is the real meaning by putting side by side the different versions of the Bible. Kasi meron tayong dalawang klase ng interpretation. The first interpretation is what you call the formal interpretation, direct from Hebrew. But it is understood that those who will use that understand what, uh, what it means. But there is also what you call the uh, informal translation or the meaning-based translation meaning based translation it is translated according to the meaning so yung meaning niyan yung sa inyo sister at saka yung mga bible dito sa lasal ano yan meaning based translation ngayon ang Philippine Bible Society uh, nagpapalabas sila ng Pinoy version Pinoy version na parang Taglish but it appeals to the young like yung ano yung gospel ni Mark na ako nagpadala uh, at si Jesus ay pumunta sa River Jordan Ang laking amazement nila. Yung parang gano'n, ha? At talagang ano? Pwede. <laughs> uh, Taglish. Uh, uh, Taglish, pero hindi, hindi Taglish in the sense na uh, it's because of the language, but because of the meaning. Ang gustong palabasin dun ay yung meaning. Kaya naghanap sila, natin meron ka bang ma-recommend na uh, pwede naming i-train for translation. Unfortunately, wala sa ano, CBAP ang available for that because it is mind-boggling. Binigyan ako ng one verse, i-translate ko sa Ilocano, sa Tagalog, sa Ipugao, sa anak ko, ilang linggo eh, hindi ko pa ma, ano, ma, kung ano ba ang translation sa Ipugao nito. And that's my tongue. Okay, like, Kasi there are, there are uh, expressions that cannot be translated directly and you will not do justice if you translate it in another way. Diba? Kaya mahirap ang translation. But anyway, it is to say that Hebrew language is helpful in the understanding of the original. Of the original. So, commentaries and dictionaries are also helpful. But be careful with the commentaries that you use on the net. Kasi may mga... Ano ba yung mga ang um, paradise daw nila ay sa Salt City? Ah, oh, yung mga Mormons. Oh, meron silang website doon uh, by the by the Mormons. Tapos meron din website ang ibang uh, you better use si ano lang si Father Felix, Felix S. Just uh, yes. uh, Felix Just SJ. Yes. Um, so First are those that contain the text in the Torah in both Hebrew and English within most cases first by verse commentary in English. These are easily accessed in the usual way through the use of biblical references. Sa Bibles na iba naman may references sa baba, di ba? May mga ano. The second group of um, commentaries, para siya and haftara commentaries. Para siya are the weekly portions of the Torah set for reading on the Sabbath. So arranged that the five books of Moses are read over the span, usually of one year. Pag one year na yan, na basa na nila lahat ang ano. Uh, can you please uh, help me? Please The Torah portion is the reading for the week. So this is an example of uh, Shabbat table talks. So you can be helped by uh, by Haftarah commentaries. Haftarah commentaries are found in the the internet. 
<laughs> in fact, I downloaded this uh, internet kasi sinabit ko, pinabish naman. So, uh, you have there what you call portions of the Torah. The portion of the Torah here is Genesis 12, verse 1 to 1727. Yung commentary mo, mamili ka lang ng isang bahagi ng reading. Tapos yun ang i-comment mo. So, itong pinili ko dito, leklekha. Leklekha means go forth. No? So, uh, our Torah portion this week consists of the words leklekha, go forth. A continuation of the Parashat Noah. Parashat Noah, that was the reading of the previous uh, previous Sunday, uh, previous week. The Lord said to Abraham, go forth from your native land and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse him that curses you. And all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you. So, uh, ask questions about that and then look for references, readings, and then you make your own conclusions. But, we did that in group. So, may mga kasama ako dito. So the first point that strikes the reader is whether, ay de, yung, yung exercise namin, tig, uh, tatatlo kami, apat, ganyan. Pero ito, uh, exercise, gumawa ka na ng uh, sarili mo. Thank you, sobra, okay, thank you. Uh, gumawa ka na ng sarili mo para i-check nila kung correct yung ginagawa mo. So, the first point that strikes the, that strikes the reader is whether or not God really spoke to Abraham. Hindi ko ni kung kinampleto yung God kasi sa kanila, uh, dapat hindi mo i-pronounce yung word na Yahweh. Ang teacher namin talaga, never na nag-pronounce ang word Yahweh. You can pronounce it, but I can't, sabi niya. Kasi built in sa kanila talaga na hindi nila ma-pronounce ang pangalan. When you mention the name, that means to say you have authority over that name. No? Kaya hindi nila ma-pronounce kasi, kaya nga may kipa sila dito eh, kasi that is a recognition of the fact that somebody is higher than they are. So kahit yung rabay namin teachers na mga, ano, mga babae, meron din mga ano dyan, mga kipa. So, since the issue is not subject to objective verification, di naman natin alam kung talagang nakipag-usap siya kay God, the only conclusion we could make would be that Abraham was indeed impelled by a voice he identified as the voice of God. Abraham acted on his comprehension of the divine and his descendants appropriated his experience and made it their own. This is according to Plow. Plow is one commentator, a Jewish commentator. Okay? So, uh, when I say, for example, sister, when did you become a sister? Sabihin mo na, because God called me. Ay, talaga? Nakausap ko talaga si God. Pag uh, sinabi niya, God called me, um, ang pagka intin ang intindihin mo yung tal hindi yung talagang nakipag-usap si God sa kanya face to face kundi there was a voice from within that impelled her you know to conclude that God is calling her or may mga experiences siya na nagsabi na God is calling her uh, So you see, yung appropriation, yun ang isinulat. So don't read things uh, literally. Na pag sinabi niya, nakausap niya si God, na talagang nakita niya si God. Pag nakita mo daw si God, matamatay ka na eh. Diba? So the second point that strikes us is God's choice of Abraham. Why did God choose Abraham above all people? O nga naman. Noah was chosen also, but a brief explanation was given. Noah found favor with, most, with the Lord. Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless in his age. Noah walked with God. So yun yung tanong ko, bakit si Abraham? 
bakit hindi si Noah? Si Noah mayroong mga qualifications. Bakit si Moses wala? Ay si, ano naman, walang sinabi eh. Moses was also chosen and there's no explanation given. But at least we could take use from the preceding chapter that Moses had a heart for the weak and oppressed, having acted in favor of the Hebrew, who was struck by the Egyptian and also his care for the daughters of Jethro. From these incidents, we can deduce the reason why Moses was singled out. But of Abraham, there is no description of his actions before he receives the command, go forth, and the promise of great blessings. And Midras was only one. Uh, uh, there is something missing here. He then tried to convince his father's customers of the stupidity of idolatry. Yan ay nasa Midrash ni uh, uh, kwento tungkol kay Abraham. Na noong ano daw, noong bata pa siya, uh, merong mga uh, diyos yung kanyang tatay na uh, ibinebenta. One day he asked one of his father's customers his age. Sabi ng tao, 50 years old. And the boy said, Woo, woo to him who is 50 who would worship a one-day idol. And the man went away shamefully. Another midrash states that Abraham smashed the idols. Tinapo niya talaga. Uh, when asked why, he pointed to the chief God and his father reminded him that the idols don't move. So he said, why then do you adore them? If Abraham was pleasing to God's eyes in his youth, why did the Torah as a subject of him? But only in his role as ancestor of the Jewish people. But only as his role. There is something about pinag pal pal dito. And the bearer of the divine message. The very fact that God had chosen him as the object of his trials was in itself evidence that he was worthy to be chosen. So, hindi natin ko question yung choice ni God. Kasi, si God ang nag nagpili. Bakit natin ko question? Eh, siya ang pumili. Katulad niya no, ni Cardinal one time, sabi niya, Ay nako, pero pabiro yan doon sa ano doon Pasko, sabi niya. Ay nako, kung ako lang ang pipili, bakit ko ordinan itong mga ito, itong mga ito, pagmumukha lang nila, sabi niya sa mga pare. Pero syempre, uh, si God ang tumawag sa kanila, so who am I to refuse them, sabi niya. Rabbi Jonathan says, a father does not test cracked jars, which cannot be struck even once without breaking. What does he test? Good jars, which will not break even if struck many times. Similarly, the Holy One, blessed be He. He does not try the wicked, but the righteous, as, as it is said, the Lord trieth the righteous. That is in Bereshit Rabbah. That is another uh, reference. Dr. Ephraim Yatsaki. By the way, when you research about the mga stories sa Old Testament, it is good to use the rabbis, no? sa yung mga Jewish rabbis. Dr. Ephraim Yatsaki of Barlan University, Israel says, Abraham's destiny was to propagate the name of God in the world in order to be suited for this mission. So Abraham had to be prepared to make a total break with his past because he is sent. So his country, his homeland, even his father's house, he would not have to wander from place to place. He had to accept being different from others, even being persecuted for his beliefs. Therefore, go forth. So he had to break away, he had to, he had to change paradigms, he had to change location. So he can be true to his mission. So go for Lek Leka is Abraham's first trial. A most difficult, if not the most difficult task. The Torah sees no purpose in describing Abraham, Abraham's past or youth because Abraham's assignment and his being chosen did not depend upon his past activities, but rather upon the future, his ability to stand up to the challenge of going forth into the world. This brings us, us to the third point. The divine command to get up and go, it begins with emotion, going, and it begins with a way or a journey. The divine command to leave his father's house and his homeland and to set off for an unknown destination was a great dilemma for Abraham because there, there was the duty of respecting one's father, and his father Terah was already old, which itself is a value of prime importance. Abraham had to make a decision in favor of one or the other of these important values. He had to make a choice. We can conclude from Genesis 12, 26, 32, and Genesis 12, 4, after Abraham's departure, Terah lived another 60 years in Haran. Abraham not only departed from his father's house, but also left his elderly father alone without anyone to support him in his old age. In contrast to the simplicity with which verse 4 relates, 
that Abraham went forth as the Lord had commanded him. The text in Genesis 11:31 hints that separation from his father's house, from the plans and homes of his father that his father had for him, had not been easy for Abraham. Terah took his son Abraham, his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, and they set out together from Ur of the Chaldeans for the land of Canaan. But when they had come as far as Haran, they settled there. My um, Bible advisor, the one who attracted me to, to study Bible, told me that when we discuss things like this, there should be a map so that the students would understand distances. Ba? Distances. And then the present name of the old of those old names. In Genesis 12, verse 5, Abraham took his wife Sarai and his brother son Lot and all the wealth they had amassed, and they set out for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in the land of Canaan throughout the parashat, we see that Abraham made moral choices after his call. He had to act in accordance with what he knew was the best in every situation he faced. As he went on through life after his call, it became clear to him that to go from your land, your birthplace, and your father's house to the land that I will show you, it meant going away from himself to become God's. It meant leaving his ego, stepping away from his perspective, and see things in God's perspective. I uh, intentionally gave this to you because it will have some uh, connection with the next topic. To stop living according to his habits and inclinations and begin to live according to God's will. It involved a paradigm shift from uh, self-centeredness to God-centeredness. He accepted the invitation to go and never turn back. Go from your land, your birthplace, and your father's home to the land that I will show you. Step out of yourself and commit to that God to which God desires for you. This was Abraham's call, told and recalled in every generation. His call is ours as well. God's appeal and invitation to him then is also God's invitation for us today. Then you connect it with the Haftarah, which is another uh, complementary reading. The Haftarah echoes God's promise to Abraham's descendant Jacob. But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its furthest corners, saying to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. God recalls to Jacob the promise he made to his forefather Abraham. And then, uh, because we were Christians studying there, they also attach the Sunday Gospel. But normally, among the Jews, well, I don't uh, Sunday Gospel. The week's Gospel is a proclamation of the Beatitude. A proclamation of the blessedness of the poor of Yah. Jesus pronounces the blessedness of those who align themselves with the kingdom values. And then there for reflection. Then and only then, after analyzing that, ano, kailangan, uh, we can try to see how or what is the message of God for us today. So Abraham heard God's call because he listened. In what concrete circumstances do you do we hear God's call today? What could be the reasons why God called you? Why God called us? What are specific implications of being called by God personally and communally? Meron akong kilalang madre asamsyonista. Pinabot siya talaga ng tatay niya ng baril. Kasi papasok siya. So, what are the implications of our call? And then, nandiyan yung ano, mga references. Okay, this was made in uh, this was made in accordance with uh, our studies in Mark Hall. So as I said, sana yung mga younger ones mag-apply sana kayo doon. Mag, uh, mag-aral kayo para madagdagan ang mga fruits ng Nostra Aetate. Okay, let's finish this first. So, parasya. That is an example of a parasya. Okay. A list of selected Jewish sources in each of these two groups is given in the appendix. So, I can stop. Okay. Alright. Uh, Habruta Bible Study Session. Ito din yung ginagawa nating Bible Study or Bible Sharing. 
meron tayong Bible at uh, yung pag-prepare ng Bible, nakita nyo naman yung ginawa ko dito, no? Dapat ang outstanding ay yung Bible, hindi yung bulaklak. Sometimes we buy flowers, ang ganda-ganda ng flowers, at yun ang pinagtutunan ng pansin. Wow! Sana hihingin ko yun at ito, i- ano, tanim ko sa bahay. Dapat ang outstanding ay yung Biblia. Kaya ang aking personal suggestion, malaki yung Biblia, malalaki yung titik. <laughs> and then may ano may plants why because we we appreciate what's beautiful we appreciate the earth we appreciate creation may kandila kandila that is lighted to tell us the living word of god the bible is the living word of god okay we can proceed to the next part all right so <coughs> When the imagination of the group is exhausted to go to the commentaries of other resources to have a conversation with the scholars, no? this part of the process serves to clarify, enlarge, modify, or confirm what has already been uncovered. The session could conclude. Ah, ito yung process ng, con- process ng Bible study. Um, I introduced to you already a short way of uh, Bible study, di ba? Uh, you have the opening prayer together, and then you read the text, and then ask questions about the text. And then, uh, after you have asked questions about the text, which is, uh, uh, which is like,